Good morning. Another day out in the wood patch here. This is into my new wood patch. Um, see I got some there, some there, some there. Some I cut up and it's gone, as you seen in the last video. Some more piles over there. But I got into some of these that are leaning. And when they're leaning that bad, I'm going to try and use a wedge on one here. Might be big enough to use a wedge. I'm not really going to be able to make much of a notch on the other side. But I don't like the way it wants to go. But as you see all this tuft here, it has to go this way through the trees. To follow, somewhat follow my trails. If it goes straight across... Some of it's going to be along my trail, some of it not, so I'm not sure. If it goes either way, I mean, it uh, doesn't really matter. I, I just don't want to hang it up, so I'm going to try and just forget about the wedges. I think I'll, I'll be able to put it down through there. The only thing is, is there's two dead ones on the other side that are leaning. You see them right there. There's two of them that are dead and they lean all the way up and that's where that tree wants to go. So I have to go cut those other two down first. It's a safe thing to do because I know that this tree is going to go and hang up in there. And if I could get it to go the other way, I'd be happy. And the only reason I thought I'd try to go that way with it is to stay away from them. But they're dead, I have to cut them anyway. So. I'm going to just take those two and drop them and then we're going to drop this one and uh, see if it'll go right through towards that stump over there. It'll all be fairly close to my trail so not too far to throw it out. My trail goes right around through the trees there. Them two I have to take down are right beside the trail. So um, you know that's what I mean. Uh, Every time I come out, I look around in case things have changed. I look around just to see because every tree is different. And sometimes it looks like it wants to go one way and you start to cut and maybe the bottom's rotten on one side and, and it just takes off and goes wherever it wants to go. Uh, look for, uh, you know, more branches. Uh, if there's a curve in the top going a certain direction, and generally the side that has more branches, um, that's the way a lot of them will fall. So you just got to take uh, little little things like that into mind. And uh, again, out here now, if I fall one, it's dry. It's 60 feet tall, 70 feet tall. I have no idea how rotten it is high up. It might be good at the bottom. It could be rotting a little bit, you know, 20 feet down or 10 feet down. And when it starts to fall and you have a lot of trees that you know it's going to hit some of them, that top can break off and then it can actually come back 30 or 40 feet. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're, you're in the line of fire. So always try and uh, make sure you have a good getaway spot. Uh, another tree to step back kind of behind as, as the... The ones going down, <clears throat> just, uh, you know, things, I've had it happen. I've had trees uh, come down, hit very close. I've had, uh, I have had a couple small branches come off and hit me on the head. And I'm telling you, not much bigger than your thumb and, and a foot long. And if it falls 30 or 40 feet, it hurts. Just about makes you see stars. And uh, I know a lot of you wear hard hats and stuff in the bush, and we all should. Um... I spent a lot of time out in the bush doing different things and uh, just uh, with, I already have had neck, neck injuries in the past, back injuries in the past that I have to be careful with and just having that extra weight. That's why I don't wear a helmet when I'm riding my skidoo. I can't have that extra weight uh, bouncing around on my head and I'm trying to work. Um, I don't work long until, until I'm too much pain. I, that's, I gotta quit. So. That's why I wear a, a light hat that's not too heavy and but um, you know just uh, 
there's there's about 15 different trees in the bush here and uh, they're kind of all lean in different directions so it's kind of like pixie sticks which one do you pull out first without causing the rest to collapse you know um, this is this is the whole uh, <clears throat> the whole thing you have to make sure you know which ones are going to come down what pieces might come off of other trees or branches so you know I was just going to just go at it and cut this one until I really looked and seen exactly where it's going to hit so we'll get at it get the other ones down first see that see there's so many here it was only a couple of feet from that tree and it just leaned up there well I think a little push I can knock it down broke so I'll get part of it I'm very happy with that but it was I guess worth what I paid for it Of course, you just heard me say I don't think I'm going to use any wedges today. Matter of fact, it's only about a, a 10 inch tree. I didn't get very far with my knot. So I'm hoping that I have room to get my saw out. Just enough. So I didn't cut a very big notch in there. See if I can get the, oh. the back side of this tree is is weak. So I gotta try and stand on the other side. So you guys are probably gonna see where it's gonna go and going to show you what I'm cutting here but you're going to see a lot of stuff up there to see a little bit of what happens when you got a tree with a lot of dry branches and part of the top broke off and came backwards so 
Now we've got the wind kind of picked up. Changed directions a little bit. I was pretty sheltered here. Uh, but get working, I gotta start peeling layers off and then I gotta start going back looking for my my jackets and my hats and whatever, but if I work slow, I might just keep the fur hat on today. Uh, so, you guys tell me when you're watching the videos. Do you like watching me limb the trees? Do you like watching me cut the whole tree up? Would you rather me put it on time lapse? I'd like to see, you know, what you guys think and uh, what you'd rather watch if you want to watch me time lapse cut the tree up. You know, or if you want to hear the chainsaw smell that two cycle smoke, you know, um, just, uh, I'm going to give you a little here and, you know, I, I don't want to just show you uh, wood cutting, but winter time that's, I do a lot of. So with that being said, I'm going to buck a few blocks, then I'm going to take a few limbs off. So we'll take you along. But I know uh, those of you that have commented you like the way my saw runs, always starts good. I, uh, nine times out of ten start my saw, warm it up, fuel it up while I'm in the yard. And less chance of it not wanting to start when you get to the bush. I learned my lesson a couple of times. Or whether the bar is frozen, you know, you're always making sure you got a wrench with you. You don't have to just quit. You can take it apart, uh, build a little fire, warm it up. You know, if you've gone quite a ways for wood, you don't want to be turning around going all the way home. But as you see, I generally carry two saws with me most of the time. The other one's just a little saw. It doesn't even run that great, but it's helped me get a saw unpinched. So if I didn't have the wedge today to, to put in and wedge that back, I would have started the other saw and just made a little nip on the back side of that tree. But you risk the chance of your stuck saw falling around and winding up under your tree when it falls. So you gotta be pretty careful with that. So, you don't wanna replace a $600 saw because of a mistake. So let's do a little bucking. my axe for some limbing but I actually uh, if you use the back of your axe and, and just hit the branch close to the tree they break off usually short right to the tree and uh, the blade always doesn't work you don't hit in the right spot and it's sharp if you miss then you could hit yourself so 
Sometimes uh, I'll cut a nice uh, little stick, about two inch round, four feet long, and you can just walk along and and hit the and hit them that way. But I should. <laughs> tree was leaning hard but it sounded hollow so I was scared to cut it because I thought it was leaning hard that way and I wanted it to come down over here I didn't think it was going to happen but what I did when I cut my bird's mouth I should have showed you but I I cut it like a piece of pie kind of tight on this side the way it wanted to actually go I kept the crack tight and I cut it way back here and then you cut this side of the tree out first work your way back to the strongest part where you want it to go that way and it actually worked and it went right where I wanted it to got quite a spiral it's a nice tamarack it's about nine inches at the bottom looks like they're Woodpeckers have been at it, but it didn't break so it's not rotten. It looks good But I stacked up my wood pile and then I knocked it down. I got piles here and big pile over there and I got to restack that one. I had to restack this one after I fell a tree on it Still waiting to get that load of wood on the sleigh Well, this turns out we're back to that first tree I was talking about and it's got a little leaner here but that little leaner's on this side of it, so when I escape root, I have to go kind of sideways over the other way. But where it does want to go, I took them other two trees down, them leaners. You can see the wood bucked up over there. And that's probably right where it's going to go. That's where it looks like it wants to go. So let's just get her down and then... Uh, We'll close this off and I'll just get some bucking, some bucking done. If it goes backwards, we're in trouble. You will be in trouble.
hung up right where I thought it would, but it's not hung up too bad. So I need to try and, and just rotate it a little bit. Something broke off. Oh, well, but she didn't come. Maybe before how I kick it sideways. Here, so I see on this side of it, I'm safe. I got a big tree there keeping it back, so get these out of my way. Oh, just about right on my jacket. You give it a push. You're going to make sure that you don't stumble. Better uh, tie a strap or a rope on it instead of doing what I did, going underneath of it. You can tie a strap or a rope. Pulls very easily. Like I said, I knew it was going to come down right here. So that's good. You can buck it up right here beside the other stuff. And I'll go look for my clothes. Don't get too sweated up here. A few more blocks cut and get loaded up.